How can you tell if you're iodine deficient? Well, one of the best ways is to do a 24 hour iodine loading test. And in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly where you can order one, the process of doing the test itself, and I'm going to share my results with you. Most people are iodine deficient due to the lack of iodine in our soil and in our diets. While a lot of people use iodized salt, the amount of iodine that is in that salt is only enough to prevent goiters. It's not giving you the amount needed for optimal health. There are many different ways to test iodine, but one of the most reliable is the 24 hour iodine loading test. I first learned about this test from Dr. David Brownstein. He's a holistic doctor in Michigan. You may have seen him on a few different interviews with other carnivores here on YouTube. He's written a bunch of great books. And in today's video, I'm specifically going to be sharing information with you from the iodine book and from the overcoming thyroid disorders book. If you'd like to check out any of his books, I will link all of them in the description below, along with a link to a free month of Audible so that you can listen to these books for free if you want to. Before we dive into how to take this test, please remember that I am not a medical professional. So please take this video as educational, not medical advice. And I would recommend if and when at all possible, finding yourself a holistic doctor who understands iodine so you can work with them for appropriate dosaging. Now, if you've been following my channel at all, you'll know that I do not like to supplement all willy nilly. I like to test for deficiencies and then I supplement to those deficiencies. There's just no point in taking taking a supplement if you're just going to be peeing it out because then you're just wasting your money. And on the other hand, the supplement industry is not regulated by the FDA. So you have to be really careful that you're taking really high quality, third party tested, natural absorbable versions of any supplement that you're taking and not doing harm to yourself when you are supplementing. In the case of testing for iodine, the 24 hour iodine loading test is one of the most accurate on the market. This is the test that Dr. Brownstein uses in his practice all the time. And in the back of his iodine, iodine book, he included a link to where you can order this test without a doctor's order. I ordered this test from hakalalabs.com. It cost $70 and it arrived really quickly. I think from the time I completed my order to the time it arrived at my front door was about five business days. I've put a link in the description below to hakalalabs.com so you can order this for yourself. This is not an affiliate link. This is just the exact link that Dr. Brownstein had in the back of his iodine book. Let me explain to you how this test works first and and then we'll walk through the entire process of taking the test. Be sure to save this video so that if and when you order this test, you can refer back to it and make sure you're doing the test correctly. It's not super complicated, but there are a couple of things you need to remember, otherwise the test will be invalid. So. How does this 24 hour iodine loading test work? This test works by figuring out how much of this 50 milligram iodine tablet you excrete in a 24 hour period. If you excrete 90% or more of this 50 milligram tablet, so that works out to at least 45 of the 50 milligrams of iodine, then you are not deficient in iodine. You have sufficient levels of iodine. But if you excrete anything less than 90%, so 50%, 25%, 85%. That means that you are deficient in iodine. Most people are deficient in iodine, so I would not expect a sufficient result unless you've already been supplementing with iodine or if you're consuming a lot of iodine rich foods like kelp. Don't be surprised if you take this test and you're deficient, that's totally normal. I personally predicted that I was going to be heavily deficient in iodine. I thought that I would excrete maybe 50% of the pill. My husband, on the other hand, thought that I was going to excrete most of the pill. He said that I'd probably pee out 43 of the 50 milligrams. So he thought I was only going to be lightly deficient. And I will be sharing with you my results here in a minute. So we're going to see just how deficient I truly was. Before we talk about what comes in the box once you order the test, I wanted to take a moment to thank Element Electrolytes for sponsoring today's video. Element is an electrolyte brand that has everything you need and nothing you don't with a thousand milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. I always advise that brand new carnivores pick up a box or two of the raw and flavored element before they start carnivore, because that first month or two on carnivore, you're gonna be losing a lot of water weight. And when you lose water, you lose electrolytes. Your electrolytes get way out of whack in the beginning of carnivore. And a great way to replace them is by using a packet or two of the raw unflavored electrolytes from Element. 
They also have a brand new product line. These are their sparkling waters. The electrolytes are already mixed in. This is the grapefruit flavor and holy smokes, I love these sparkling waters. They're so convenient and they're very delicious. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. So you can head to the link in the description. It's drinkelement.com slash Jenny Midich. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Jenny Midich and get your free sample pack with any order today. And that applies for for the packets of Element, it also applies to the sparkling water. Any order, you will get that free sample pack. Moving back to the iodine test, let's talk about what comes in the box when it comes in the mail. First is this orange three liter collection bottle. You get this little plastic cup to collect the urine, two vials with preservatives inside, a biohazard bag, and a box to return your sample, a 50 milligram iodine tablet, and an instruction sheet and a form that you're gonna have to fill out a few things on and send back. Here is the product process of taking the 24 hour iodine loading test. First off, if you are already supplementing with iodine, you need to stop taking the iodine for at least 48 to 72 hours before you take this test. I would err on the side of caution and go for the longer period of time. I would maybe would even go like four days without taking your iodine because you don't want to skew your results. Now, this is a 24 hour urine collection test. So what you're going to do is wake up first thing in the morning and go to the bathroom. You don't need to collect that urine. And then you are going to take this 50 milligram iodine tablet. After you've taken that tablet, collect all of your urine for the next 24 hours. It is essential that you collect all of your urine, otherwise this test will be invalid. So let's say you get up in the morning, you pee first thing at 8 a.m. and then you take the pill. Be sure to collect all your urine until 8 a.m. the next day. This clear container here is what you're going to be collecting your urine in. I just put this right next to the toilet so that I would remember I need to collect all my pee. You can put the orange storage container in the refrigerator to minimize odor. Just a tip, overnight I ended up putting that orange storage container just in the bathroom so I didn't have to go all the way to the refrigerator to pour my samples in. I do sometimes pee overnight so I didn't want to have to deal with that. Once you have collected all of your urine in that three liter orange container, you are going to shake it up really good. And then you're going to pour a sample of that into one of the vials, the vial labeled vial one. I would say fill that vial up about three quarters of the way full and then put the cap on and then shake it up really good. There are preservatives in that vial so it'll turn like a greenish blue color. Now there is one caveat. Let's say you pee more than the three liters that this orange bottle can collect. That's why there are two sample vials included. If you fill up the orange container to the three liter line, then don't fill it any higher. Just shake it up when it gets to that point, And then you are going to pour a sample into vial number one, shake that up, and then put that to the side. Then you can empty out that three liter container and kind of rinse it out a little bit and then continue collecting your urine for the rest of the 24 hour period. Once you hit the 24 hour mark, shake up that second batch of pee pour a sample into vial number two, and you're good to go. Next up, on your purple form or whatever color it is when it comes to you, there's a couple of things you need to fill out. Your name, your address, but you also have to fill out the volume of liquid that you collected. So for me, I collected 2,600 milliliters. It is very important that you mark down the volume of liquid that you collected. The lab needs that information in order to do their calculations. So if you don't fill that in on this sheet, your test will be invalid. How do you know how much liquid you collected. When you are looking at the bottle itself, you're gonna see these little hash marks on the side here and also on the side here. That's gonna tell you the amount. So it goes 500, one liter, 1500 milliliters, two liter, 2500 milliliters, and three liters. So you don't wanna fill it up past the three liter mark, but that's kind of how you know. So I filled it up to this point, that was 2600 milliliters. Now, all of these instructions that we just went over are also going to be on that instruction sheet that comes with the kit. And that's it for your collection. Once you have collected your sample vials of urine, you can empty this out and clean it. Now, if you're wanting to do this test again in the future, say you wanted to get a baseline level of iodine and you wanted to then supplement and test 
you know, a month or two later, you can hold on to this orange container. There is a sticker right here with a coupon code on it that will save you $5 on your next test. So then they don't send you this huge thing again. It's just a way to help reduce the amount of plastic going into landfills and to save a little bit of money. Let's package up this test and get it ready to go. Like I said, you need to fill out your name, your address, the volume of liquid that you collected, and then you're going to put your sample or samples into this little biohazard bag here and put all of that into this little return box that they send along with you and seal it shut. There is no postage required. The postage is already paid for. It's okay if the sample gets hot or cold during shipping. The preservative that is inside of each bottle is going to keep the sample good for up to 30 days regardless of temperature. So you don't need to worry about that. On the instruction sheet, before you pack it away, there is an option to get your test results through email. This will be the faster option, but it is not HIPAA approved to send, you know, results through email. So if you want that option, you have to check a box and sign your name and then you'll get your results through email. Otherwise they'll come to you through the mail. I sent this box in on a Tuesday and by the following Tuesday, so just five business days, seven total days, I had my results in my email box. So let's take a look at what the results sheet looks like. My 24 hour excretion was 42.77 milligrams of that 50 milligram iodine tablet, which means I have an 85.5% excretion rate in 24 hours. Again, what we're looking for is 90% excretion or more. So looking at this 85.5, I am just slightly deficient, about four and a half percent below what I would need to be to be considered sufficient in iodine. My husband was almost spot on with his prediction. He said I was going to excrete 43 milligrams and I excreted 42.77. So how did he know that? I don't know. He's, he's just a psychic like that. But this is good. What this tells me is I'm not in as tragic of a place as I thought I was. I'm currently supplementing with anywhere between 6.25 milligrams and 37 milligrams of iodine per day. And as far as what that would look like in the different iodines that are available out there, we've got the Lugol's 2%. One drop is about 2.3 milligrams of iodine. The Lugol's 5%, one drop is about 6.25 milligrams of iodine. And then the Iodorol, one pill, I have the 12.5 milligram one. So one pill would be 12.5 milligrams of iodine. There's also something called nascent iodine. I have no experience using that whatsoever. So I will I'll not speak to that there, but I will link all four of those options in the description below. Let's quickly go over some iodine FAQs. Iodine is an essential nutrient. It is part of the halide family. Iodine is the non-toxic essential nutrient that we need, but the other halides in this family include fluoride, chloride, and bromide. In our modern world, you know, we have fluoridated water. Uh, bromide is in everything, furniture, synthetic clothing, food, like baked goods. They stopped using iodine and baked goods in the 70s and started using bromide. It's like, why? But the problem with that is that bromide has a very similar chemical structure to iodine. So if you are not getting enough iodine in your body, what is going to be filling those receptors instead of the iodine is the bromide. And that's really, really bad. You do not want that. So as soon as you start supplementing with iodine, your body's going to kick those bromide molecules out of your iodine receptors and the iodine is going to go in there. So you may have some bromide detoxification. That is something that Dr. Brownstein talks about extensively in this iodine book. So I strongly recommend you pick this book up. Again, I've linked it in the description. It is really, really good. Basically, in addition to taking iodine, you need to take unrefined salt as as well. So you could do a Celtic sea salt or something like that. The salt really helps to detoxify the bromide from your body. And unfortunately, you know, in modern times, it's really hard to avoid bromide. I mean, I follow a carnivore diet, but I also wear clothing. I have furniture. I'm out in the world. So you really can't avoid bromide as much as you try. You can do your best, but you're still gonna have a little bit of an exposure. So that's why I really like to pay attention to my iodine levels, making sure that those iodine receptors are filled with iodine molecules the way they're supposed to be. Next, it is especially important to supplement with iodine if you are taking thyroid medication. Your thyroid needs iodine in order to create thyroid hormone. Taking thyroid medications can increase your cellular metabolism and increase the need for iodine. That's why it's so important to work with a doctor, a whole holistic or a conventional doctor, either or, but it needs to be somebody that knows what they're talking about when it comes to the thyroid and iodine. 
Next tip, when you're picking an iodine to consume, make sure you are getting a Lugol's formulation. You do not want to be consuming any of these iodines that are meant for first aid. You are looking for Lugol's iodine, either 2% or 5% is typically what it's coming in. The Lugol solutions that I linked in the description of this video are suitable for supplementation. Another note, I've talked to some people that have had reactions to the radioactive iodine that is used in some medical scans. And I wanted to let you know that radio Radioactive iodine and supplemental iodine are completely different. If you had a reaction to radioactive iodine, you are most likely, almost 99% certain, you are not going to be having a reaction to just regular iodine. They're completely different substances. And if and when at all possible, I know sometimes these medical scans, you absolutely have to get them done. And if you have to get them done, you have to. But if it's just kind of an elective thing, I would avoid radioactive iodine as much as humanly possible. If you would like to learn more about iodine and thyroid health, I strongly recommend recommend all of Dr. Brownstein's books, but he's excellent. He has tons and tons of books. Salt Your Way to Health. I have that one too. That one's really good. Overcoming Arthritis, uh, The Soy Deception, The Statin Disaster. He has lots of fun books. So again, I'll link all these in the description so you can check them out if you'd like to. In the meantime, if you haven't watched my thyroid video with Dr. Amy, where she walks me through my entire thyroid panel, I'm going to put a link to that video right here. I'm also going to put a link to another video I think you may enjoy. And with that, I will see you in the next one.